Hey everyone, happy new year. I am doing a little year in review, kind of what I learned, kind of a butterfly update and of course a yard update um, since it's January now and I wanted to kind of share with you some of the changes that I hope to make to the garden but also um, I'm really proud of myself for what I did this year. I raised a bunch of butterflies, monarch and swallowtails, learned a lot about gardening and gardening in Florida and gardening with a puppy and um, pollinator gardening. So I want to kind of share some of that with you. But um, the first thing I want to share with you is my total tallies for all of my butterflies this year. So this is my little notebook that I've been keeping track of everything in. Um, early, earlier in the year, I have been also keeping more detailed records. Um, if I took in caterpillars or if anything weird was happening um also mostly when i still have my butterfly room up but if you saw some of my earlier videos i ended up taking it down which i'm glad i took it down um i got a foot injury back in august that's still i mean i'm still in a boot so that's definitely limiting my um time out in the yard right now so i certainly couldn't keep up with everything but um this is my kind of at a glance that i was working out of so um just this here from my first releases and these are the ones that like I was specifically like I had them in a cage or something and they um you know were one of mine that I actually like held in my hand and released out into the world not to count the ones that were just in the yard as it is uh so just kind of kept it really basic here a date the sex of the monarchs um I had released three swallowtails but we'll get to that in a minute so up until the very last minute, you see, like, I took a little break. This is around when my injury started. And then um, I just happened to take in a few right around here. So definitely a big gap of how much I was doing. But, you know, such is life. I still did pretty great overall. So at the end of the year, as far as the monarchs go, I did 21 males and 20 females. Raised them, released them out into the world. Three swallowtails. Um, I don't know the sex is because I'm still learning on figuring out how to tell the difference. It's not as clear as the monarchs. Um, I released one queen butterfly, but ultimately it grew, it hatched and the wings were a little, um, unfortunately, not supporting the flying. So it ultimately ended up going back into the life cycle a little bit earlier. Um, and then the, the, I mean, but this count here is not taken into account up here so these are ones that um were either released and i wasn't here so i don't know the sex um they never hatched or they hatched and immediately died or hatched and there were problems so i mean 41 here but ones that were flown out into the world so that's 41 42 43 44 here so a little under 50 if you add the swallowtails about 50 so for our first year, you know, that's pretty exciting. So I'm very thankful for that. I plan on keeping this up in um, 2020 just so I can keep kind of track of how things are going. So I'm actually up front right now in the, I don't know, it's not really a sunroom, the front of our house. It's a south facing area. You can see from behind me how bright it is. It's only um, maybe about noon right now. And it's a semi sunny day, but there's definitely a lot of light in here. And I have the blinds closed, but I do have a rack here that I was, um, I got my orchids up top and I've got some seedlings that I've been trying to raise uh, periodically. I'm gonna stand over here. So there's some actual color behind me. But um, one of the big things that I learned with the Monarchs this year is the milkweed is a huge, huge thing. Cause that's the only thing that they eat. Uh, obviously I'm in Florida, so tropical milkweed grows well here, but so does a lot of other kind of milkweeds. And I learned that while the milkweed population of it across the world, like not just here, just across or across North America, wherever is going down and it's largely connected with development and, um, construction and whatever the human based things are. Uh, in my experience, the reality is, is like, that's true, but I am literally planting hundreds of seeds and sometimes they grow, sometimes they don't. Sometimes I harvest the seeds too early. Sometimes I did it too, whatever. So sometimes it's the seeds not growing, but honestly, even when the seeds grow, 
I'm a I'm new to seed starting this year. I really like I've very 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 little experience prior to this year with growing anything from seeds. So it was really hard to learn how to grow seeds and then grow specifically milkweed and that was the main one that I was focusing on this year. But milkweed is not like in my mind I was like, "Oh, it's a weed. It's going to be super easy to grow because weeds are all over right like people are always like oh weeds keep popping up and and there a quote came through um my feed months ago that was something along the lines of weeds are not necessarily bad they're just plants that you didn't want in that spot and I think that's probably true because I could see milkweed taking over um if left unattended for a little while but I haven't had that problem because of a few things um once the butterflies know it's there, it's on and it goes super quick and that's good. Uh, except for it takes a really long time, I feel like, to really get a good plant growing and healthy. And um, I'm glad that the caterpillars are finding it and I'm glad that they're eating it. But unfortunately, anybody who's raised a monarch knows that one hungry little caterpillar can demolish a plant super quick. And um they're expensive from the nursery here. Uh, not crazy, but you know, if you figure a couple plants per caterpillar, that adds up a lot. So I'm, I don't find that to be an especially sustainable way to maintain raising caterpillars. So that's why I went to the seed method. Um, and I have had some success where you, you know, you cut the top half off of maybe like a three foot long milkweed stem that's been stripped and then you stick in the ground and it repopulates the plant and yes that absolutely works um but again it takes time for the leaves to grow and really make enough for a um a whole ecosystem to develop around it so that's one of the problems I, I ran into this year um I'm still learning on it I still I'll show you later I have seeds out in the yard um in a tray that I'm working on for milkweed to see how they go just trying something different because I tried them in this um south facing area here but at the end of the day, they got leggy and the seedlings didn't really um, grow very healthy. And so they ultimately just ended up, I just tossed and then tossed them, but threw them out in the yard and was like, well, I hope for the best. Like, we'll see how this works out. So that's kind of one of the problems I'm dealing with. But the other one is the natural predators, not the hornets and the wasps, because they're like, oh, yes, of course, like those. Uh, I can't do anything about that. But the ones that I'm having problems with are the aphids and the little beetles or whatever they are, the red and black things. Um, so those are just taking over the plants and destroying the plants uh, slowly, but they're doing it and they're infesting everywhere. And I know you're supposed to spread out the milkweed and I am, but it's hard, you know, they're container plants at the end of the day so they're having a hard time like you can only put so much in a container to disguise it from all of its predators so that's something that I'm working on but the little amount of time that I spent with the swallowtails this year um I was really intrigued by it. I feel like there's more personality if that makes sense like they feel like they're I don't know there's something fun about them I really enjoyed and um they are the natural predators for some of their host plants like the parsleys and the dills and the fennels and stuff like that so i'm actually working on trying to grow more of those plants in 2020 because um I, it's probably easier um i think i don't know i haven't grown any of those from seeds either but i'm working on it and um i'm kind of curious to try raising them a little bit more to see how how raising them is different than raising the monarch butterflies at least so that's my goal uh for 2020 i mean it's january like i don't know it's been five minutes into january so early stages and still dreaming but that's kind of where i'm at right now so i'm gonna go out and show you guys kind of what's in the yard right now it's definitely a mess because you know still in a boot so that's unfortunate but that doesn't mean i'm gonna slow down or anything i mean well it does and literally i'm slowing down because i have a boot on but I am still dreaming about doing things in the yard this year. I don't think I'm gonna do a butterfly room like I had in 2019 as much as I want to. Um, just as a renter, it's just, it's not impossible, but I can't keep up the milkweed enough. So maybe if I have um, more swallowtails that I'm tending to and I can come up with like a sustainable swallowtail habitat, I will. But until I get a better grasp on how to 
grow milkweed in mass essentially I don't think I can sustain the butterfly room again this year so this is my jumbo butterfly habitat here uh, it's on my porch I thought I was being clever and put some a city picker in here and then as I found um, some caterpillars outside I you know brought them in and that's where a lot of my last few of December um, hatched from I still have uh, I think I have like two guys yeah I have two guys left in here but this is the part that kills me this milkweed I bought it from the nursery I made sure it was clean I hand cleaned it killed every aphid everything I could possibly find on it by hand no pesticides no nothing and it just it's just dis deteriorated so quickly and that's it. I don't know if that's like a milkweed issue or what it is but it's really hard to um to watch because those plants never really got to develop but um they're just they're just decomposing in there because there's something eating them that isn't isn't the milkweed eaters that I want like the caterpillars so once those last two caterpillars hatch in the next couple days I'm probably gonna empty out that cage clean it out um bring the city picker out and put it out in the yard somewhere um where I don't know yet but I'm gonna try and show you um I can't spend too much time out in the yard because with the boot on um I well you can't see it but there's tracks of dirt all over uh, my house because I keep going out in the, sun, in the yard getting excited and wandering off and then coming in and bringing dirt everywhere with me because how do you clean a boot like that I don't know anyways let's go look at the yard so why am I showing you this bucket well, this is one of the milkweed varieties that I really liked. I picked up this year. Um, if you saw my earlier videos, it was the milkweed uh, family jewels. And these little spiky guys turn into big balls, essentially little, like tennis balls. Um, some of the butterflies were eating it, but um, it's honestly more decorative than anything else. Um, if, as long as there was tropical milkweed, that's what they were eating. Um, it's not the healthiest one right now. Um, this self-seeded from another one that I had earlier this year and it's grown on its own. I haven't really given it enough love, but, um, I plan on replanting it. I just gotta figure out where. This is some fennel that I actually started from seed. Obviously my success rate is not as high, like only a couple of these are working, but they're pretty, they're pretty healthy. There's new growth in here. Um, we've gotten a lot of rain lately, so they've kind of been sitting in there, but I'm working on kind of growing some of that. Some of the other ones I did, um, I did grow. Oh, this is my little, one of my little green stalks and I'll share an update soon, but I'm going to be working on redoing these. I have two of them technically, and I'm going to be putting them here, but, um, these little spinners didn't work for me when they were out in the yard. So hoping to redo that. Don't mind my random Christmas stuff. We're still working on it. Some of my swamp milkweed is still in there. That was a cutting that we took. Um, I, the guy at the nursery told me, don't put too much stock into the swamp milkweed because it's thicker. So the butterflies don't, the little baby ones are, it's harder for them to eat it than the bigger ones. I don't know if that's true or not because it's milkweed. So like clearly somebody eats it and online I see butterflies eating it, but <sighs> that's what the guy at the nursery said. So here are my, mostly my edible garden. So we're gonna do a quick overview of the edible portion of the yard or mostly edible. This is my recently added broccoli, but the rest of these are cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, I don't know, different ones. These I actually started from seed myself, which surprisingly, they took a little longer to get going, but um, they did okay. I'm not really sure what to think of all this, but look, 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 look. Little chrysalis on a broccoli. Two for one. Favorite vegetable and a chrysalis. Where did that one come from? I don't know. Maybe, maybe this little lone guy here or this little one that I threw in a pot. I don't, I don't really know. Tomatoes, I'm surprised they're growing. Rose, pretty bare looking right now. Peppers need to be ripped out probably, but I'm letting them linger for a little bit because I don't have anything else to put in there. 
And then I just found this little gem at uh, Home Depot the other day. And it's, they literally call it a snowbird tree. Um, but it's a cocktail tree and it has key limes and Meyer lemons on it. So that's amazing. Uh, Brussels sprouts doing good. And then my cauliflowers are just starting to show up. Welcome to the party. So that's a nice way to start the year is cauliflower that you grew yourself. Um, I also have more tomatoes over here. So hopefully they'll get going. Um, my pollinator, I don't know, hive is my sweet almond bush here and it's doing really well. Um, I truthfully haven't been watering it a lot lately because um, honestly just haven't been out here enough to do it. So I don't have quite as many act active bees up here that I, as I normally do, but doesn't matter, still counts. Uh, and then really quick, you can see all of my green stock I took apart uh, over here and I'm gonna reassemble it, but you can see like this parsley is practically exploding. Like I don't get that kind of results as quickly as I do with the milkweed. So if I can get parsley and get some swallowtails, I'd rather do that because then I get parsley and butterflies. <laughs> um, but anyways, I'll come out at night to show you our new lights that we installed. It's it looks really great. Um, some strawberries and there's some random strawberries mixed in. I don't know if they're from last year, so I don't know how they're gonna do, but I hope they survived. Um, this is probably the last piece of the swamp milkweed from the original. If you guys remember, there was a big um, whole banana tree and eight or nine boxes, I think, around here. Um, that one and then this one over here with the mixed milkweed are probably the only ones that I didn't dump out and I'm going to be starting over. This container needs to go, <laughs> but, you know, with a, a bouton, I can only do so much at once, but... Um, I'm not gonna walk through all this dirt because it's been raining, so it's a little messy. But if you guys remember, right here is where the banana tree was. Those are the roots. If you haven't seen it already, go watch a video that I just uploaded. It should be the one in order right before this of Wally helping me dig up the banana trees. Oh my God, I barely had to dig it up. It was amazing. He helped dig, like my little puppy just dug up the whole, pretty much all of that. And then I just pulled it out at the end. It was amazing. Over here, I'm staging um, or laying out some boxes where I think they I want them to go um, I started working on it and then I was like you know I think they might be a little close to each other because I want things to be able to grow in and really get bushy so I'm probably gonna end up moving it but um, I just wasn't sure where I was gonna go yet and until all of this kind of levels out and sinks in I was a little hesitant to put anything out here but my plan is to just have all of my pollinator stuff over here for the most part and then keep my edible things over here. But then I was like, but I could have had more broccoli and stuff. So I don't know, it might be a little too late to plant some of that stuff, but um, I might, you know, we'll see where it goes. But um, if you have any recommendations, let me know. But I have all this space here, all the space. I have this much, you know, 10 feet, but it doesn't matter, still not nothing. So if you guys have any recommendations of what to put in here, let me know. Um, otherwise, that's where, that's where the garden's starting the year. So hopefully I should have some updates for you soon. I'm definitely gonna show you guys um, when I redo my green stalks, what they look like, um, because I'm super excited about them. And I think they're gonna be, I, I, I'm gonna, I ended up ordering a third one. So I'm gonna have two green and like a beige kind of um, creamy one. So I know I definitely wanna have one for the strawberries because they were amazing. Um, I definitely want to have one for all of my swallowtail, so I, I just want to do like a swallowtail only kind of setup if I can. Um, we'll see about that. I don't know if that's the best idea I've ever had or not. And then I'd really like a third one to be a mix of herbs and probably strawberries if I can, or herbs and turnips. Um, no, not turnips, radishes, um, because I think I can grow radishes, but I don't know. I've never grown them before, but I think I can. So we'll see. And then maybe later on in the year, um, since I had such great luck with my potatoes, I'll probably throw some potatoes in later on in the year. But for now, um, yeah, we got, we got a pretty decent garden going. Well, you made little gnomes. So cute. So cute. All right. January 2020 garden. Here's where we're starting. Hoping this time next year we're in a different spot. But for now, thanks for watching the update and uh, stay tuned for more butterfly raising updates.